You are indeed listening to The Watchman, and I bid you welcome one more time to this program, The Watchman uh, Radio Program, uh, broadcasting live from the United Kingdom, uh, London, England, uh, to be exact. And uh, I am your host, uh, will be your host for the next uh, hour or so. My name is Minister Curtis Roach from Shiloh Revival Tamanaka. And this program, The Watchman Radio Program, is all about the end times. And it is to open your awareness to the times that we are living in and uh, to make you aware of the nearness of the imminent and soon coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, to rapture his bride. And indeed, he is at the door and we are here one more week as the Lord is still tarrying to blow the horn and to let you know that his coming is indeed near, that we are in the season of his coming. Of course, no man knows the day, no man knows the hour. We do not know exactly when he will come, but he did inform us and uh, quite clearly tells us so, that we will know the season. And uh, I want to report to those of you who may not realize, who may not have heard it before, or uh, may be doubting it, that indeed we are in the season of his coming. And the fact that we do not know the day uh, or the hour uh, is uh, something that we should consider very seriously and uh, realize that we should be living in a ready state ready living every single day as the very last thinking that this day will not end for me you should live every day like it's your last day because it could very well be there's nothing absolutely nothing to stop the rapture from happening right now so as the lord tarry as he is giving us this free time this grace period as we would call it I would admonish you and encourage you to take it quite seriously. Think about it. Don't think long. Think for the most half a second or even less. And make up your mind. Make a decision to serve Christ. Make a decision for him right now before it is too late. Again, I thank you for joining me. Let me get into the program for today. And uh, what I want to do is to share with you again the very last uh, three letters that were dictated by the Lord to his servants, the prophets that I usually uh, bring on uh, this program uh, in the names of Susan Davis and also Pastor David Pierce. Uh, the prophetess Susan Davis, she received uh, uh, two letters uh, last month, uh, one on the 2nd of September and the, the other on the 19th of the same month. And uh, Pastor David Pierce, he also received a letter on the 26th of the very month last month and i want to bring those letters to you to let you hear what the lord is saying in these final days so three letters from the lord i'll be sharing with you today and i'll begin with the first two letters from susan davis that were received by her the first one, which uh, is titled, Wake Up, Lost Children, Those Who Lean on Your Own Understanding. And this one was received on September 2nd, 2015. It reads, Dear children, the hour is nearing for my return. Do you feel it? Do you see the world collapsing in on itself? Do you see the senseless crime all around of men's hearts growing ever colder? You know the world is not right with me, it's God. The world has turned its back on me. 
Only my children remain free of the fetters of sin and lust for the world. These are the ones I am coming for, those who look like me, formed in my image, crowned with my glory, bestowed with my beauty, walking in my peace that passes all understanding. They walk confidently before their God humbly, knowing I am their source of power, peace, and comfort. All is well between us because they are mine, wholly surrendered, fully given over to my control, my plan, my will. They will not suffer. They will be brought free of the calamity that lies ahead for this grotesque world that is full of sin and disdain for me. Wake up, lost children, those who lean on your own understanding. I am your only hope. You lean on the devil he holds in custody. You do his will, not mine and not even your own will, although you believe this. You are not your own. You belong to me by a full submission or the enemy at birth through your father's lineage, the race of Adam. Cursed at birth because of willful sin against God brings curses and Adam chose against me. And the curse he carried down through the ages and only my blood-bought salvation will render the curse null and void in your life by a full surrender to me as your God, as your Lord, Savior, and Master. To be in the will of God, a choice must be made. Will you accept this gift of freedom from the curse you are under, or will you follow the broad path to hell? You are under Adam's curse. You decide. Freedom is yours. You choose. All is a choice. Time is short. Choose quickly or stay behind with the rebellious children who love the world. Unforgiving, full of pride and sin wantonly with no regard for others. You must choose. This may be the last time you can choose. No one knows the hour of their last breath in this world. Reject me not. Many have rejected me and now have eternal regrets in hell. Lord, Savior, Master, Righteous. That's the end of the first letter, the coordinating scriptures. They are Second Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verse 18, Micah chapter 6, verse 8, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, and Isaiah 42, verse 5. That's the first letter. I will get uh, straight into the second letter from uh, Susan Davis. And this one was received on the 19th of September. It's headed, No Man Knows the Hour. That's the title. And uh, the letter reads, I am ready to give you a new letter. Children, I, God, have new words to speak. My time is coming. My time. For I am in charge of all time. I am in charge of the hour I will return. You are not in charge of this knowledge. No man knows the hour. Children, there is a reason for this. You would not want my enemy to have this information. You would not want to have this information either. My children, 
If you knew exactly the hour of my coming, you would all procrastinate in your coming to me. You would put it off until the time of my coming. You would not prepare your robes and make them clean. You would not be ready even if you knew the exact moment of my coming. You would not run into my arms because the pull of the world would be too great. You know it is the season. The season is all you need to know. That means now is the time to prepare. Already so many are on their way to hell because they ignore my warnings carefully placed in my word. Children, you must sit up and pay attention. Who will prepare you if you do not make a full surrender to me? Only I can take you by the hand like a child and lead you. Only I can hold you up above the challenges that life brings. No one is exempt. All must choose. Everyone has a choice to make who is the age of accountability and able to choose. You children need to take your focus off of the date of my return. That is only for I to know and focus on me, your God. Do not remove your gaze from me. Put your energies in finding me in intimacy and pursuing your lost brothers and sisters who are all around you. Too many will be left behind, left to terror, sadness, loss, and sudden destruction. Children, seek me. Now is the time to prepare, not later. Later will be too late. I am holding the door open. When I come through to take my bride home, I will shut the door and no more will it be open. Pray that you be found worthy to escape. I am coming very soon. Will I find you ready and waiting for me? Soon, children, be ready. Your Lord doth come it. That is the end of the second letter that was dictated to Susan Davis. The coordinating scriptures for this letter, they are Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 to 39. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. And uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 36. And uh, I'll get straight into the third letter. This one was uh, dictated to Pastor David Pierce out of Australia on the 26th of September 2015. And this letter, it reads, My son, I have words for you. Write them down. I am the Lord and there is no other. I am master. I am Lord of all creation. All of creation will bow to me and worship me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I am God of the Bible. I am its author. I spoke through holy men of old. I spoke to them and they heard my voice. I moved upon their hearts and they wrote down my words, my holy words. Each word of God is precious. Each word of God holds true. Many have turned away from my words. They hold little regard for their value. They hold my words in low esteem and they keep them not. 
This is unacceptable, son. My words must be heeded for what they are, words from God. They must be obeyed. My words are not to be reasoned with or explained away. They are plain and clear to understand to all who wish to know their true meaning. But to those who wish to alter the words of my book and to change them to suit their own wills, evil plans and agendas outside of my will, sudden destruction will come upon them. Judgment will fall on them swiftly and without remedy. They are cursed children who alter my words. How foolish they are who think they can alter my words to suit themselves. I am creator God. I am to be feared. End of discussion. Whoever wills can come to me. Come quickly. Come humbly with a repentant, sorrowful heart because of what you have done against my will and in a dishonor of my word. Don't delay, for the time is short. Jesus, Messiah, soon coming King. Again, the end of that letter. The coordinating scriptures, they are Psalms 119, verse 89. Proverbs chapter 4. Verses 20 to 22. And uh, John chapter 6, verse 63. Those are the three letters that I wanted to share with you today from the Lord. Letters dictated to his prophets. One from the United States of America, Susan Davis, and the other from Australia, Pastor David Pierce. And as you hear the three of them, you will see and you can hear that the three letters are coming from the same source with the same message, the same words. And the message, the one that is standing out quite clearly and loudly is that time is short. Time is short. The evil is running rampant around the world today. And he is doing his very and utmost best to blind the eyes of those who do not have their eyes fixed on Jesus. You will not know that time is short because your attention is being captivated by the world around you, by the cares of life. You're so focused, you're so worried about what is happening about you, about what will happen tomorrow, the things that you want, the accomplishments that you are pursuing. You are so focused and captivated by those things that the last, very last thing on your mind is Jesus and his very soon coming. Even though there are so many signs around us pointing to his coming, you are not seeing it because you are blinded by the cares of life. You're blinded by all of your worldly pursuits. And I'm not just talking to the sinners out there. I'm talking also to you Christians who are not fully focused on Jesus, who are also pursuing the world and its things. He's saying quite clear that all of you 
who are under that bracket or within that bracket, sudden destruction is heading your way. The enemy, he's not your friend. He will make everything look nice and dandy. He'll make everything look quite pleasing and harmless. He will even go out of his way to make sure you get the things that you're pursuing. Well, see, once he can keep you, keep you in this world, to keep you pursuing the things that you're pursuing, once he can keep you where you are right now, keeping you happy, he himself is laughing, laughing at you, laughing because he will have extra company when he goes to hell, his final destination, where he knows fully well that he's heading. His destination is already sure. But you, you have a choice now. You can choose between the two places of heaven and hell. And he is quite happy to help you along the way to hell where he is going. Why? Because he hates your guts. He hates you with a passion because you are created in the likeness of God. And he wants nothing more to see you perish. But God, on the other hand, he has no desire for any man to perish, but for all to come to repentance, but for all to come to his saving knowledge. The Lord has sent the like of me here, along with the many others around the world who are preaching this message to remove your blindfold. To not listen to the lies of the enemy anymore. And to wise up. Wise up. Because time is short. Don't take these messages lightly. When you hear that time is short, know for a fact that it is indeed very, very short. There's no more time for fooling around, no more time for playing games. Whatever needs to be done has to be done now before it is too late. The message is clear. The message is very clear. It's being sounded out quite loudly. You cannot say that you haven't heard. You cannot say that you were not warned. And don't say, oh, I live in the world and I have to have things. Because provision in the world has already been made for all of this. So go to the word and find it. Again, let me warn you that time is short. There is definitely no more time left. Whatever needs to be done, do it now. But time is going. You are listening to the Watchman. As I wind down, I want to turn your attention to the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. And you can get a Bible and read this for yourself. Well, that particular verse, as I was speaking before, as I mentioned before, is the main provision that was made for all of us with regards to our concerns about living, about our life here about what we're going to eat and drink, about what we're going to do tomorrow, the work that we need to do to make money and all that. This particular verse is a provision that was made for you and I to take our mind off of these things. 
this verse tells us quite clearly that if we would only just seek the Lord with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our soul, just seek the Lord. In other words, pursue our relationship with him above all else, above everything else, above everything that is of this world. Put God first. Put him first in your life, even above your own family. Put him first. Put him first above the things that you think that you need to live this life. The things that you think you need to survive in this world. Put God first. Seek him. Seek a close walk with him. Put that first. Make that the most important thing in life. And that verse also promises that if you would only there to put your faith and trust in God to do it, to do exactly what I've just described, that if you would seek him first, then all other things in other words all those things that you are worrying about all those things that you are pursuing all those things that you need that verse promises and he tells us quite clearly that he will make absolutely sure that you have them. Did you hear that? It's quite clear. In other words, you don't have to waste time. You waste your time pursuing this thing because the time you waste pursuing this thing uh, is time spent away from God. And that is not what he wants. He wants to spend time with you. He wants you to spend time with him. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. So he says, once you seek him, once you do that, give him your time, then those things will come looking for you. God, he owns all the money in this world. He owns all the gold, all the food, all the clothing. He owns everything. He's God. And he says that he will give you whatever you need if you would only just put him first. It's just as simple as that. All he's asking you to put faith and trust in him. Have faith in him. If he said it, he will do it. He will accomplish it. One of the scriptures that were given to Pastor Peace in the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 89, it says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven forever O oh lord your word is settled in heaven which word the bible every word in the bible has been settled in heaven in other words it has already proceeded out of the mouth of god and because he has already said it he cannot take it back he will not take it back. And every promise that he made, he will have to come good on them. He will fulfill every promise. And that very promise that I've just explained from the book of Matthew 6.33, it is a guarantee and a must that he will fulfill it. Once you keep your side of the bargain, 
Once you do your part, he will also do his part. There's no two way about it. It is a certainty. It is a must. Seek God first. And his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. Everything that you need in this life, you will have it for all certainty. So that is a provision that was made for you. Put him to the test today. Tell the enemy he is a liar. That you don't have to be killing yourself or worrying yourself about those things. About the needs of life because God has it covered. That your God will supply your every need according to his riches in glory. That your God will never leave you nor forsake you. Put God to the test. Put your trust in him. Have faith in him and you will see him work on your behalf. You will see finance coming your way. Without you having to go and break your back for it. You will see everything that you need in this life coming your way. Without you having to go in full pursuit of them. Ring, ring goes your doorbell. Standing outside your door is money. Standing outside your door, clothing. Standing outside your door, a car. Standing outside your door, a house, whatever is needed. To fulfill the will of God in your life, it will be there knocking at your door. And that's a guarantee. And I can say that because I am a living witness of it. I can preach it, I can teach it, I can tell you about it. Because I have experienced it myself. And I know the countless others who have also experienced it. And every born again believer who are fully surrendered to God can testify to it also because his promise is not for, for one person it's not for me alone or just for a few select but his promise is for all of those who have done their part who are willing to come to him in full surrender who are willing to give him all of their time who are willing to to surrender their all to him. This promise is for you also. If you would only just do what is necessary, do what is needed for you to gain what you need in this life. God, your father, if you call him father, He has everything in abundance. He cannot run out. Heaven is his. The world is his. The universe is his. Everything in it belongs to him. Again, just trust him. Just trust him. And believe in his word believe in everything that he has promised and I can guarantee you that you will be satisfied if you just make that decision to trust him that you will be more than happy that you will see for your very self that God is true that God is faithful that God is ever loving and kind and compassionate and that he is a man of his word. Trust him today and allow him to give you 
that free gift of salvation that Jesus went on the cross to bear, to pay, and to endure for you. If you're not saved, I'm appealing to you right now. For you're not listening to this broadcast by accident. You have not tuned in to this radio program by accident. The Spirit of the Lord has sent you, He has guided you to hear not only the words that were spoken before, but also to hear and to receive this invitation to accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior. This could be your very last chance. It could be the very last invitation you hear. And should you decide to put it off, should you decide to turn a deaf ear, you will be doomed for all eternity. Where in that place called hell, what will happen? You will be burning up in fire and brimstone. Will you die? No! It is a place where death will not be found it is a place where pains are highly intensified you will feel it more and worst of all you'll be feeling it non-stop non-stop for all eternity that is why Jesus went all out of his way. That is why God went all out of his way. Because he loved this world so much. He loved you so much. He loved everyone in it so much. That he does not want anybody to end up in that place. It is not a nice place. Not a good place. No human being should be in that place. Because it, it was not initially created for any. No matter who you are. The price of your salvation has been paid for in full. There's nothing you have to come up with. Nothing you have to do. All that is required is for you to confess him. For who he is and, act, and just ask him to forgive you for doing the wrong things you are doing in this world, in this life. Forgive you for sinning against him. And the Bible tells us that he is faithful and just to forgive you of all of your sins. Whatever kind of sin you have committed, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. He says that God, Jesus Christ, he has paid the price of God. He is faithful and just and he will forgive you of all of your sins and cleanse you from all your unrighteousness today. Is your day should hear his voice had not your heart you may not have a next chance so today is your day accept him as your Lord and save it today before it's too late if you want to say that prayer today I'm going to help you with a prayer all you need to do is just to repeat the words that I speak and all you need to do is just to believe That whatever you ask for, that you will receive it. And that is also a next promise in his word. That he says that whatever you ask for in his name, that you will receive it. And this is in 100% accordance to his will for you to be saved. So there's no question, there's no doubt that if you ask him to save you right now, that he will save you. So if you are that person, you want to do it now. Wherever you are, just say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Son of the true and living God, 
you said in your word that if I confess my sins, that you will forgive me of them. I believe that you are a faithful God. So I confess that I am a sinner. I ask you please Lord to forgive me of all of my sins. And cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Wash me clean with your blood and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please write my name in the book of life today and come into my heart to stay. Thank you, Jesus, for answering my prayer. And thank you for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have said that prayer according to the word of God and according to his faithful promise, you are now saved. You are now heaven bound. You are now considered the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Congratulations and welcome. Welcome into the family of God. You are now a child of the one and only true living God. Hallelujah. Hold on tight to what you have just received. No one, no one, nothing in this world can separate you from the love of God. No principality, no devil in hell. They cannot take from you the salvation that you have just received. So hold on tight to it. Don't give it up. Don't let it go. Just hold on to it. If you have a Bible, get into it. If you don't have one, get one. Start reading it. Start studying it. Start meditating on the words that you read. And coupled with that, get an attitude of getting on your knees and talking to God. Pray to Him. Have a conversation with Him. You like talking to people? Talk to God. Talk to Him. He's God. He knows you. He understands you. You don't have to get in no kind of legalistic type of uh, prayer. To have any special type of prayer language just talk to him like you would talk to anyone just carry your concerns to him carry all of your cares to him ask him questions ask him to lead you ask him to show you what to do just talk to him ask him anything he's God he has the answer and he will point you into the right directions and that's a guarantee so those two things that I've just described in, a, in terms of getting into the Word, reading the Word and praying are two, uh, two things that build a very strong foundation and helps you to grow in God. So do them quite diligently. Hallelujah. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. My time is up and it's time for me to go again. Congratulations to you again if you have uh, said that prayer of salvation. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, congratulations. As I said, it's time for me to go. I want to thank you for joining me today one more time. This is the Watchman Radio Program uh, broadcasting live from the United Kingdom, from London, England to be exact. I was your host, Minister Curtis Rhodes from Shiloh Revival, Tamanaka. Jesus As usual, I want to extend a quick invitation to you there if you are in London or planning a trip to London at any time. You want to find a place to worship where you'll get the unadulterated and true word of God. 
you are welcome to join us. You're free to join us. Where you can find us at Parkview School on West Green Road in London. Postcode there is N153QR. That's N153QR. You find us there every Sunday from 12 p.m. Jesus come. Should you want to contact me for any further information or anything else, you can find me on Facebook. Just search for my uh, Facebook profile under my name, Minister Curtis Roach. Alternatively, you can search for the page for this program, which is under the name The Watchman Radio Program. Leave me a message and I'll respond to you at my earliest convenience. Thank you one more time. I should the Lord tarry. I'll be here again next week, Friday, same time, same place. From 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. with another edition of this program, the Watchman Radio Program. But until next time, again, should the Lord tarry, God richly bless you. Goodbye. Jesus come.